year oral and he has been red hot in his last three starts an ERA of about three quarters of a run and coming off his last outing which was a nine inning shutout against the Philadelphia Phillies scattered eight hits struck out 13 which is a high for the season and he is back on the beam over his last 11 starts since he had a slow start at the beginning of this year. He has not given up more than four earned runs in any of those starts and he has gone at least six innings and those nine innings he's coming off of Nomar. He has been sharp. He has looked really good and hopefully the offense could give him some run support because the struggle or not that the time that Clayton Kershaw his record doesn't show it is because of the lack of offense in the run support. But the one guy who has supplied the offense so far this opening of the second half has been Adrian Gonzalez in that first game. You know, started yesterday, he hits a home run and then comes back today and going the other way and hits another home run. It's the way he started the uh, first half of the season. It's the way he's starting off the second half of the season. So Kershaw getting ready for his 19th start of this season. Doug Fister will be in his 12th for the Washington Nationals. We're getting ready to play game two of this three-game series. Nationals taking the field. We're getting ready to play. Coming right back. Suffered a painful loss, a pinch hit home run in the bottom of the eighth. Nationals win it five to three. The game that began five after seven last night. And we are ready to play the second game. Closed captioning is brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel, Der Fun, since 61. And it doesn't take long to turn things around, and Jock Peterson ended the first game with two on and two out in the top of the ninth, striking out. And here he is beginning the regularly scheduled game and takes a ball outside. One ball and no strikes from Doug Fister, making his 12th start of the year. A record of three and four and an ERF slightly over four. Missing outside two balls and no strikes. Well, the key to Doug Fister is obviously keeping the ball down. He gets a lot of ground balls with that sinking fastball. He's got the slider curveball to go with it. This year, his fastball velocity has averaged about two miles an hour less. And he's also been getting balls up in the zone, which has a tendency for a sinker baller to flatten out and make it a lot easier to hit. So the Dodgers should really cut the zone in half and look up. Peterson takes a walk as we begin game two of this three game series. So Doug Fister, an ERA of over four, and opposing hitters hitting 290 against him. Howie Kendrick stepping in. 
Kendrick 0 for 4 in the first game. After Kendrick, it'll be Turner. And Adrian Gonzalez, Ethier, Quig, A.J. Ellis catching in this game. Rollins batting eighth, Kershaw pitching and batting ninth. So Fister falls behind Kendrick. Trying to erase that sour taste in their mouth after the, with the quick turnaround. Dodgers here in the first. Love to get some runs. Ah! State Clayton to a lead. It was always the fun part about being a starting pitcher on the road. Your offense first and you can take the mound with a lead. At home all you can do is have problems. <laughs> all you can do is give it up. <laughs> this year you got a chance to start positive. Kendrick at 289 with a fly ball to right. Bryce Harper's in. Defensively behind Fister in the second game. Harper in right. Michael Taylor has done a nice job in center filling in for Denard Span. Clint Robinson in left. Escobar, Desmond, Espinosa, and more in the infield. Jose Lobatone is the catcher. Doug Fister is the pitcher. And Justin Turner is stepping in. Turner 0 for 3, hit by a pitch in the first game, scored a run on the Adrian Gonzalez home run last night. So Turner at 302. Jock Peterson this year has stolen but two bases. He's been caught five times. As Turner looking down at Lorenzo Bundy for the side. The Dodgers continue to have the fewest stolen bases in the league, 19, and they've been caught 22 times. They've been by and large a station to station team all year. In the left, and Robinson is there. Yeah, station to station team and a team that's really relied heavily on the long ball. And obviously it's, it's helpful when you actually lead the National League in that category in home runs. And also that you lead it in on base percentage. But you also got to find other ways to score and not always have to rely on that. Well, we had a perfect example of that in the ninth inning this afternoon in the first game. First and second, nobody out. Rollins came up. No uh, sign of sacrifice, hit and run. He flied to center field. And then Kiaspo oh. would fly to left. Peterson would strike out. And so first and second, nobody in the ninth inning. And they came up empty. Kershaw. Pacing feverishly, getting ready to pitch. There goes Peterson, the throw, and he is out at second base. He tries to steal second. He's caught for the sixth time this year. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Kershaw getting ready for his 19th start in search of his seventh win.
Together to face Clayton Kershaw with Michael Taylor leading off in center field. Escobar led off in the first game. He'll be in the cleanup spot. Espinosa, Harper, then Escobar. Clint Robinson, Ian Desmond struggling at short. Robitone is the switch hitting catcher. Tyler Moore at first base. Doug Fister is pitching and batting ninth against Clayton Kershaw. Uh, Clayton last pitched in a regular season game back on the 8th of July against Philadelphia. We talked about those nine innings and then he pitched again in the All-Star game on the 15th and was scheduled without that All-Star outing to pitch the first game of this series. But because of that inning there or two in the All-Star game he uh, got an extra day's rest but he is locked and loaded ready to go and there is no rust to knock off here. It's just to make sure that he responds and Throws the way he did against Philadelphia. Through 22 pitches on Tuesday night in Cincinnati, and here's Michael Taylor. Calling it back, it's nothing in one. Taylor in the first game was 0 for 4. Beat out a double play ball in the eighth inning. Would keep the inning alive, and then Den Decker following him would hit the two run home run that would be the difference in the game. Denard Span out with a bad back, and so Taylor has been filling in both in uh, left field and center. And he punts it in front of the plate. Ellis throws him out. Taylor was never inside that runner's line at all. Defensively behind Kershaw. Round up the usual suspects. Only difference between the first game and this one, A.J. Ellis behind the plate. So it's Ethier Peterson and Puig in the outfield. Turner, Rollins, Kendrick, and Gonzalez in the end. Battery, Kershaw, and Ellis. Danny Espinosa coming up. Switch hitter who was one for four in his first down, in his first ball game. He swings and misses, and it's nothing in one. Espinosa, of course. At a Long Beach stick. We're up in Santa Ana. No balls and two strikes. A little different routine for Clayton Kershaw between games. Three pitches, he's gone. Two out. As the bullpen was walking in from the bullpen area to the dugout, Clayton Kershaw was running out to the third baseline to start his sprints. With the short turnaround, he wasn't in his normal regimen. But he got all of the things done that he likes to get done, but might be, maybe not in the same exact area that he normally does it. Well, two of the biggest stars in the game facing off one another. Kershaw and Bryce Harper. Harper was 0 for 1 in the first game, walked three times, twice intentionally. The future of this game is in good hands. Isn't it? Oh. There's the curveball that makes Clayton Clayton. 74 75 miles an hour and then go all the way up to 95 20 mile an hour differential that has really set his career on a different level. And a fastball up and in at 96. Just amazed at that curveball where it started. It started off such a ball out of the zone. That's why as a hitter you give up on it. You're like comes out of his hand. Okay you look at it you set your sights. Okay that's a ball and then you just see a break all the way down to the lower part of the strike. On 0 and 2. One ball, two strikes. Well, the curveball does so many things for him against the hitters because it not only is a change of speeds, but it is a change of eye line, like you say, Nomar. So it sets him up, sets up his slider, it sets up his high fastball. And sets up the curveball. Oh! -ho! A 95 96 mile an hour fastballs and then that. Nothing across for the Nationals. Gonzalez will lead off for the Dodgers in the second.
Capital, 86 degrees at game time. Scoreless as we go to the second inning. Doug Fister and Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw, 11 pitches, nine strikes, and he struck out Harper on a devastating curve to end the first. And Adrian Gonzalez, who was standing at the altar in the top half of the first when Peterson attempted to steal, leads off in the second and takes low and inside. One ball, no strikes. So Gonzalez with two home runs in the first game back. Drills a liner in the right field for a base hit. Adrian Gonzalez is locked in after the break. Because of last night's suspension, each team was allowed to add one player to the roster for today. Alana Rizzo joins us downstairs, and the mystery guest is... Well, it is Zach Lee, the right-handed pitcher that the Dodgers selected as their first overall pick, the 28th overall pick in the first round of the 2010 amateur draft. And, guys, it's been a long time coming for Zach Lee, the 23-year-old. This season at AAA in 11 starts, he's been a start of the majority of his career. 6-3 and record, a 2-3-4 ERA. Don Mattingly saying that he's going to be used in long relief today if need be. Highly doubtful with Clayton Kershaw on the hill, but a major league debut possibly none. Nonetheless, a day he will never forget. So welcome to the Dodgers, Zach Lee. Andre Ethier at 281, 10 home runs, 31 runs batted in. Hit the ball right on the schnoz all four times in the first game last night and again this afternoon. Had one hit out of the deal and fouls it off to the left. It's nothing in two. A couple different purposes of calling up Zach Lee, even if it's for only 24 hours, if he pitches or doesn't pitch, it will be a day that he never forgets. But it is also a day that he will gain some experience just being around the big leaguers, seeing what a big league clubhouse is like, other than in spring training, getting used to this atmosphere. And if he's a September call up or you need him sooner than that, the day will help him. In the left center field for a base hit. On his way to third is Gonzalez. So Ethier is aboard, and the Dodgers have runners at the corners and nobody out. Not the fleetest of foot, Adrian Gonzalez, but a good piece of base running. First of all, the hitting right here. Andre Ethier doing a good job staying inside that ball and going the other way with it. We talked about how well he has been swinging the ball, I mean, swinging the bat so far in the second half from yesterday to tonight. But Andre, uh, Adrian Gonzalez with that read, doing a good job going from first to third, especially that ball hit to the left fielder. So the Dodgers are in business. Runners at the corners. Nobody out. Yasiel Puig, two for three in the first game. Dodgers not shy about swinging against Fister. Doug Fister, right handed hitters are batting 342 against him. Lefties, 250. Goes against the grain. So here's Puig with first and third. You'll see how a little upset about himself. Doug Fister really has turned into a fly ball pitcher as we take a look at his average against righties and lefties. This is a guy who was a ground ball specialist and already in this game, ball in the air, but Ethier, Gonzalez, Turner, and Kendrick. This doesn't have the same heavy sink that he had. It was a heavy sinker and a little bit of a cutter. And he was really, really good with Detroit. But here with Washington, he's had trouble keeping the ball down and finding that depth in his movement. On one and two. Greek breathing a sigh of relief, and Fister is not pleased with the call from home plate umpire Adrian Johnson. It's a ways inside. The pitchers won everything. <laughs> I didn't want that one. The glove was set up for a ball. Yeah, and I definitely don't want Yasiel to strike out. Yasiel took a little scoot off the plate, though. Ellis on deck. That play is not going to happen. Gonzalez comes in to score. Espinosa tries to do the best he can with what little he had, and the Dodgers take a one to nothing lead. Yas Yasiel does a good job going, taking this ball right back up the middle. It hits Fister. 
Espinosa able to get to it. Good hustle by Andre Ethier. Espinosa has time to play that routinely instead of flipping it with the backhand there. Maybe that's something he does very, very well and just made a mistake on that one. But Ethier wasn't even in the vicinity as far as that was a one out play with Yasiel running. Getting it over Fister's head is no easy task. He's 6 8. Now A.J. Ellis. He's inside. So the Dodgers looking to get off the mat after the tough loss they absorbed about 45 minutes ago. Jimmy Rollins on deck with Ethier at second and Puig at first. Fister falls behind 2 0. Oh. As solid as Jordan Zimmerman has been for Washington this year, and as great as Scherzer has been, what? Fister has struggled. An ERA of over four, and opposing hitters hitting nearly 300 against him. Last year, 16 and six with the Nationals, 14 and nine with the Tigers the year before that. What? Two and two to AJ Ellis. Talk about setting your sights up with Fister, staying off the ball, bottom half of the zone because he gets that ground ball with that sink. But those are two balls right there that were up in the zone that AJ took. And drills it. Oh, what a play at third base by Escobar. Ample time to double clutch is Espinoza. Ellis bounces into the double play. Ethier goes to third. That was scorched. A.J. Ellis has been swinging the bat real well coming into the All-Star break in another home run. He scorches this ball. If he gets under it, he might have a home run, but it's not. It's on the ground and with his wheels and how hard he hit the ball. Pretty routine double clutch double play. Had a Carl's Cam. Replay double play and Jimmy Rollins. With Ethier at third. Rollins 0 for 4 in the first game. And takes a strike. It's nothing in one. Well, here we are with the eight hole hitter up, and I would think the Dodger bench is talking about there is nothing Fister can get us get us out with if we keep him in the strike zone. There's not a lot of movement. There's not a lot of velocity. He's not really changing speeds real well. He's missing up. There's got to be a lot of confidence up and down the lineup after they go through once that they're going to see him real well. Kershaw on deck. Rollins takes down and in. So the Dodgers with the early 1 0 lead. And two to Jimmy Rollins. And tomorrow, the pitching main event Max Scherzer and Zach Rankin. I was saying earlier, Oral, hard to believe it. Kershaw is on the undercard. Yeah. Rollins takes a call third strike the inning is over the Dodgers come up with a run and three hits and leave one Kershaw to face Escobar Robinson and Desmond in the bottom of the second.
Kershaw brought his A game with him in the first inning, striking out two of three, including Bryce Harper. But if this is any indication of what it's been like over the past four years, well, Clayton Kershaw gets better as his seasons have gone on in the second half. So too, Doug Fister, Zach Granke has an ERF 2.7 post All Star break since 2011, but none lower than Clayton Kershaw. For his light, cold, hard facts. It'll be Yunel Escobar leading it off for the Nationals here in the second inning. Escobar was three for five. Home run and two doubles in the first ball game. Enjoying a career year and at the moment. Fouling it off to the right. It's nothing in one. Escobar at 328. Clint Robinson and Ian Desmond will follow. So Escobar gets a piece of the breaking ball and fouls it off to the left. And he is really up in the box to try and get the curveball before it breaks. You see his front foot when he gets in the box is almost up by the front line. He's, he's trying to get it early, even though Clayton can touch 96. Breaking ball struck him out. Three strikeouts in a row for Kershaw. And not only has he brought Uncle Charlie with him, Lord Charles is in attendance today, too. Well, I think it's actually smart by you now, Escobar, moving up on the plate. That's what you got to do. You're facing a great pitcher like Clayton Kershaw with a big 12 to 6 break that we just saw from the curveball. You try to minimize that break as best as you can. But even despite that minimizing it, he's still. It's one of the best curveballs around. Even when you know it's coming. And if not that, the slide. And if not that, a 96 mile an hour fastball. Clint Robinson fouls it back. And it's one and one. Robinson struck out twice and walked twice in the first game. Ian Desmond on deck. Rollins can't reach it. Robinson is aboard with a single. First base runner of the game for the Nationals. And a fastball trying to get outside, low and away, up and down the middle. That was the kind of mistake that we saw earlier in the year from Clayton. His fastball command has really improved as the season has gone on. That was just a mistake. Not that it was hit hard. It just. He gave Clint Robinson a chance to put the bat on it. Ian Desmond stepping in. Desmond at just 207. Desmond was hitless in his four at bats in the first game. Jose Lobatone, the catcher, is on deck. Nothing in two. Ian Desmond at 207, a two time Silver Slugger Award winner. But his season to this point has fallen off the cliff. Had the throw just been a hair lower, it would have been a pickoff. Clayton has been called for a few box with his throws to first. Oh, has two pickoffs on the year. Box have come really with the angle of his step to first as way first base umpire and the home plate umpire have been getting him on and he tries to really fight that line to take as much room as he can to fool the runner. 
Meanwhile, four of the five outs recorded by Kershaw have been strikeouts. As Lobatone steps in. The understudy catcher is 15 for 70. It's 214. And right now you get a sense, Oral, that Kershaw could do about anything he wants out there. Yeah, he really looks locked in. Only 21 pitches. He's coming off a, a season high 123 pitches against Philadelphia. A season high 13 strikeouts against Philadelphia, and he looks just as locked in. And what I've seen early is that very first pitch, recognizing that a lot of teams have been really aggressive on him, knowing that that's a you know he's trying to get that first pitch strike and. It's usually one of the better pitches to hit off Kershaw, but he's almost taking that attitude as an 0 2 pitch and just making a quality first pitch strike. Two and one. Tyler Moore is on deck. Kershaw of the seven batters he's faced, the first pitch strike to six of them. Dodgers one nothing in the bottom half of the second. And it's two and two. There's a slider that just buries that looked like it's a fastball right down the middle two one count fastball count but boy right there and then just down. Hitters are going to guess with Clayton. Hitters are going to guess the inner half especially the right handed hitters. Two and two with two out. Turner to Kendrick and that's that no runs and a hit will go to the third Rollins Kershaw and Peterson will bat against Fister the Dodgers lead one nothing. It's time now for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag data strong fan and you just might see yourself in an upcoming telecast. Brought to you by T Mobile. Go Dodgers! So Clayton Kershaw will lead it off for the Dodgers here in the third inning. It'll be Kershaw, Jock Peterson, and Howie Kendrick. Clayton at 146, six hits in 41 at bats. One ball and no strikes. Here's the first out of the third. A 
Escobar made that look way too easy, didn't it? <laughs> and there's not many that times that you think positioning is going to get a pitcher out. But, boy, they had him positioned perfectly. You know? And then that, how about that double play, too? That was a rocket right at him, how he came up with that one. Oh, caught that above his head. And over the course of his career, you think of, you know, Escobar as a shortstop. Mm -hmm. but of course, Ryan Zimmerman has been on the shelf and really he's not much of a third baseman at all anymore. Desmond has become the shortstop but the way things are going Escobar may soon be the shortstop of the future or rather uh, Escobar the shortstop of the future. Peterson takes up and away he walked in his first at bat is now two and oh. With two on and two out in the ninth inning in the first game Peterson missed a home run down the left field line by maybe a couple of feet. He would then strike out and that would end the game. Peterson was one for five in the first game and was struck out three times. And it's two and two. Kendrick on deck. I thought there were a couple things that Peterson did good in that first game. One when his first his hit with two strikes he didn't get a big swing and he just kind of hit the ball the other way. Into right field Harper had trouble tracking it initially with the sun. But he played that position out there since coming up. Tracks it down two out. And the other thing I thought that Jock Peterson did. That hopefully he can look back on. It was his last at bat when he hit that ball down the left field line where it was almost like a two strike approach as well where he was protecting and it can let him know that even with that type of approach you still have enough power to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Howie Kendrick fouls it off to the right. Kendrick flied out in his first at bat. 0 for 4 in the first game. Weeks base hit in the first inning has the Dodgers or in the second inning has the Dodgers leading. Can't take one off the foot. Justin Turner is on deck. Not only is Fister's movement less, his uh, his command is less. He used to be a guy who could just dot it on either side and cut it and sink it. Hitter just didn't know if the ball was going left to right or right to left, and they didn't know which side of the plate he was going to go. You never backed him into a corner because he could just make pitches. On two and two. Down the first base line. Quickly over to contain the damage is Bryce Harper. So a two out single to right for Kendrick. Wasn't hit really hard. Kind of got in on Howie Kendrick. But gosh, that approach is just so pretty where he just thinks about going the other way. Staying inside the ball. Even if you get jammed. He's able to find holes and right down the line. Now Turner. Wide to left in his first at bat. 0 for 3 and hit by a pitch. In the first game. Ah! Gonzalez on deck. Nationals won 4 of 6. Against the Dodgers last year, a line drive base hit in the center field. Kendrick stays put, and Gonzalez is coming up. Fifth hit of the game for the Dodgers. Other than two outs, it's about exactly where the Dodgers want to be. First and second with Adrian swinging the hot bat up there. 
Adrian was one for three with two home runs and knocked in all three Dodger runs in the first game. Home runs, 58 runs batted in for Gonzalez, who takes inside one ball and no strikes. Big rip, throw down to second base, and Kendrick is fortunate. Ball kicks out of the glove of Desmond. Catch looked like he was a dead duck. Oftentimes, runners, when you see the pitch going in and you see him swinging through, you kind of start leaning as if he was going to make contact, and they recognize how far off it was and almost picked off Kendrick. Too much of a secondary lead. And that would have been a big mistake. I and mean, this is a time you do not want to get picked off when you have your RBI guy up at the plate, runner in scoring position. Well, two outs, you're going to go on contact anyway, so you can shorten up by a half a step because you're going to gain it on running automatically. Two balls and a strike to Adrian Gonzalez. Each of the last four years, the Dodgers and the Nationals have been. In first place after the break, or in second place after the break in same years. Last year they were tied for first. Year before they were in second. In first place the prior two years. So these are big. These are big games. If you're assuming that these clubs are going to be in the postseason, you're looking at home field advantage. These games are far more important to the postseason than the All Star game for the seventh game. Involving these two particular teams. Yeah, you look at measuring sticks. You know, the Dodgers are always measuring themselves against the Giants, the Giants against the Dodgers, but then you look outside the division and the Dodgers always measuring themselves against the Cardinals. And now the, the Nationals are on that chart. Where are we according to our rosters and how we play these quality teams that we might meet in the playoffs? On three and two, the runners go and a fly ball to right field. Harper's there. That'll do. No runs, two hits, two left. As we go to the bottom of the third, Kershaw will face the eight, nine, and one hitters for the Nationals. One nothing done. Pitchers enter a game with a game plan with their catcher, and hitters enter a game with a game plan against the hitter. 
They sure do. And against Clayton Kershaw, the league is starting to attack first pitches. Six of seven strikes, first pitches for Clayton Kershaw, but all six of seven are swinging strikes because they don't want to fall behind. They want to hit the hard stuff. They don't think they're going to see the curveball on the first pitch. So they're looking for the fastball, and they're also looking for the slider. They don't want to get to Uncle Charlie. It also plays into Kershaw's hand to this degree. He's thrown for 25 pitches in the first two innings. He's been economical. He has struck out four, hasn't walked anybody. And here is Tyler Moore leading off. High and inside, one ball and no strikes. So Kershaw had a bit of a rocky April into the middle of May. Boy, has he ever turned it around. He has now fired 14 straight scoreless innings. And in his last three starts, has an ERF under three quarters of a run. That's big Gahuna Scherzer goes to ball. Two balls and one strike. You're going to see velocity from Max Scherzer. You're going to see movement. You're going to see change of speed. You're going to see deception. Peterson's got a long way to go. Hey, he's done it again. Jock Peterson. He had a mile to run and makes a sensational catch yet again. Every time you see the ball hit, you're going, does he have a chance to get this ball? It looks like it's too far away from him, but he covers so much ground. As you see in the Morongo slow-mo cam coming up with the ball and helping out his pitcher, Clayton Kershaw. Spectacular play turn. Now here's Doug Fister. Throws right, bats left. And another first pitch strike from Clayton Kershaw. Dangerous way to hit when you're a right handed pitcher. Your throwing arm exposed to the pitcher. That's the sixth hit of the year for Fister. Effective way to hit for him, but a dangerous way. Clayton Kershaw wanted to try and do a kick save and a butte, but Fister got it through the middle. Clayton tries to kick it there with his leg and just missed it. And we've seen more than a few backhand stabs on those comebackers through the middle turned in by Kershaw. Now Michael Taylor. Number one in front of the plate in his first at bat. No balls and one strike. Danny Espinoza is on deck. There it is again, attacking the first pitch. We've seen one first pitch taking this inning, but we've seen another one where they're swinging at. And missing. Four strikeouts for Kershaw. Hasn't walked anybody yet. Right, the Long Beach State is on deck. Now Adrian Gonzalez is a big fella. But he's dwarfed by the base runner. Fister. Adrian's about 6'3. Fister's 6'8. Could post him up. We're going to have to switch. Well, Kershaw has five strikeouts now. And be one of the first 40,000 fans in attendance on Sunday, August the 2nd. And the Dodgers and Angels will have at it, and you can receive your very own Dodgers cap presented by Security Benefit. For more information, go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. We're doing some work on the Capitol building. It has been for a year or so. Travel around D.C., and it is a postcard that comes to life. Espinoza. 
takes inside one ball no strike. Nationals won the first game that began last night and ended about an hour and a half ago on a two run pinch hit home run by Matt Den Decker in the eighth inning. And Pedro Baez, meanwhile, Kershaw to this point, a virtuoso performance. Espinosa was victimized by Uncle Charlie. In the first inning. Danny Espinosa now 28 years of age. Third round pick in 2008. It's just not right. The batter before Michael Taylor, he threw pitches that started off as strikes and then they just fell out of the zone. And then now with the curveball to Espinosa, he throws a pitch that starts off at a ball way out of the zone and it falls in for a strike. What do you look for? Uh, that's <laughs> that, that's what I'm thinking. As a hitter, where do you set your sights against Clinton Kershaw? See you later. <laughs> Man. So two more strikeouts for Kershaw. He's got six on the day. And Tyler Moore victimized by Jock Peterson. Another highlight worthy catch. Dodger Baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by the 2015 Jeep Cherokee. With an EPA estimated 31 highway MPG, it's the perfect choice. Visit Jeep.com today. And by Flex Alert. This summer, the power is in your hands. Visit FlexAlert.org. A third away through this ball game, the Dodgers one run in five hits, the Nationals no runs in two hits. Clayton Kershaw has struck out six through three and has used only 38 pitches along the way. So he has brought just all of his tools from the chest this afternoon. Andre Ephier, single to center in his first at bat. Ephier, while wow, the box score says he was just one for four in the first game, hit the ball right on the button all four times. And he single to center. In the second inning of this game. Quig and Ellis to follow. Oh. 
Up and away. Eighth year at the moment is at 282. Ten home runs, 31 runs batted in. Fister pulls a string and he is way out in front. It was a great change up right there from Doug Fister. Good arm action. Got his release point out front. Made it look like a fastball. Like you said, Charlie, just pulled a string on it. You know, no more. We talk professional at bats. First person comes to mind on our team for me is Adrian Gonzalez and Howie Kendrick. I tell you, Adrian Gonzalez or Andre Ethier has really started to put a group, a large sampling of professional at bats together. And I really like the way he's really recognizing his strengths and attacking that early. Into left field, Robinson. It's foul by a few feet. And then fouling off, you know, he'll either fight off or foul off some tougher pitches that. And then that one right there, even staying inside the ball as well. Now for the casual fan, what does a professional at bat mean? Well, it's it seems it's like when you're adjusting as the course of the at bat going on. It's not the same type. It's not a one-dimensional swing all the time. A one-dimensional approach. Right. Um, you know, you take Jock Peterson for example. You know he's going to be swinging hard every single time. Swing, he miss he, a lot. Right. And even with the you know two strikes for the count. Eighth year to center field. It's Michael Taylor. And I think no matter what, who's on the mound, what type of pitcher you're facing, and types of pitches you're swinging at, you're always in balance. You know, you see rhythm and balance. And there, I, and I think those guys that we were talking about, Adrian Gonzalez, Howie Kendrick, and now we're talking about Andre Ethier, is that pitchers, there are certain batters when pitchers come up to play, go, if I execute my pitch, he's an out. That's my job. I, yep. he, he only hit a mistake. Well, these guys can also hit, even if you think, oh, if I execute my pitch, they'll still find a way to get it, get a hit. Yep, they'll still find a way to barrel it up. Yeah, and or they'll have a chance to get a hit, and pitchers know that as well. So that's that that encompasses that professional at bat. I think I think four in our lineup right now, the way they're swinging it. Howie Kendrick, Justin Turner, Adrian Gonzalez, and Andre Ethier. And that's why they're hitting two, three, four, and five. Nothing in one to Puig. An infield hit and an RBI in his first at bat. Tried to check his swing. Went around. Bill Miller, the crew chief out of UCLA, clinches his fist. It's the development we're still kind of waiting on with the OCL Puig. We know the abilities there. We're looking for that consistency and that day in and day out approach. Desmond at short. I think that's what we see with Jock Peterson. I think we see a tremendous amount of ability, but we still see him learning, learning himself, learning his swing, learning how the, the, the league is going to. And we've yet to see the adjustments out of Jock yet. We're just seeing the exceptional ability. So we talk about game of adjustments, and there's a question of adjustments from one pitch to the next, one situation to the next. Well, I always say good hitters adjust from. Canva. Good hitter who can adjust from a game to game. Say, okay, I know what I did wrong this game. I'm going to change it up for the next game. Really good hitters could do it from a bat to a bat. Great ones do it from pitch to pitch. Right. Ellis bangs a single into center field with two out. And who's the great hitters that can stand success too? You know, where you don't get lackadaisical when all of a sudden you are going off and you're locked in, and you then you start forgetting about your work habits. The guys that are the hot streaky hitters compared to the consistent for the whole year hitter. Well, I'll tell you that the challenge is when you're locked in is recognizing how you have to continually to work there. to stay locked in. You know, and then there's that fine line between oh, I'm overworking to get myself out of it, but. Knowing, okay, just enough, and still recognizing that feeling as to when you're locked in. So whether it's a routine in the cage that you like to go through, maybe it's a number of swings, whatever it may be, or that couple of solid ones, you're like, okay, I'm locked in. I don't want to hit anymore. Let's get out. And those guys who are really great too can recognize. They know what to go to when they are struggling. I've always said this. Like I was 
fortunate enough to win a couple of batting titles. And I always said, it's not because I hit better than everybody else. It's because I minimized my slumps better than everybody else. I was able to get back on track quicker when things were off. So it's hard to make it look easy. <laughs> Hitting, yes. It's very hard to make it look easy. This whole game, yes. To make this game look easy, very hard. <laughs> no balls, two strikes, and two out. Rollins, a strikeout victim in his first at bat. And the Dodgers with a one to nothing lead with two out in the fourth. Well hit, but foul. At the amateur level, it's easy to make the game look easy because the guys that end up at this level are just better than their opponent. So even in their downtimes, they're still better than their opponent. So they never really struggle. But when you get to this level, <laughs> everybody the, has been the, the best in their league wherever they've right. been until here. You can, yeah. Rollins to right. And there's Harper. No runs and one base hit. Kershaw will face Bryce Harper to begin the bottom half of the fourth when we come back. You know you're in the nation's capital when you see that five presidents in the president's race. And I think Teddy Roosevelt actually finally won today. Welcome back to the nation's capital, everybody. The Dodgers with a one to nothing lead as we make our way to the bottom of the fourth inning. Bryce Harper set to lead off the inning for the Washington Nationals. And, of course, expected big crowds here all weekend long when you have two of the rising stars in the game. Of course, I'm talking about Jock Peterson and Bryce Harper, three players who have yet to turn 24 and have already homered at least 20 times. Mike Trout of the Angels, the other guy to do so. You can see the comparison there so far in their careers. Bryce Harper, obviously, in his fourth season. Young Jock, a rookie in his second year in the big leagues, making his first all-star appearance. Bryce Harper has been there three times. Fun to watch these guys develop. And Bryce Harper, who struck out against Kershaw in his first at-bat, hitting 344 at home. And he steps into the batter's box, hitting 337 overall. He can hit anywhere. This has been his breakout year for Bryce Harper. If you go back to the topic we talked about last inning, professional at bats, that's what he has become. A guy who can put professional at bat on you now, not just ability. That slider right there, Clayton Kershaw just spitting on it. Kershaw to this point has struck out six, hasn't walked anybody. Two and one. Bryce Harper doesn't turn 23 until the middle of October. He already has career highs in home runs and RBIs, and the season's just a little past the halfway mark. A little late to the dance on that 94 mile an hour fastball.
Two balls and two strikes to Bryce Harper. Well, he's not the first one and won't be the last. That is strikeout number seven for Kershaw. And the second time Harper has gone down on strikes. Let's take a look at the sequence of how Clayton works. And he starts him off with a couple sliders right there, low and away. That's a little bit more of the cutter, the harder one. That's a little bigger break right there for ball one and one. Now the curveball he misses with, so he challenges him with the gas. And now he goes right back to a curveball. But this is a different one. That's not the one from the sky. That's the one that looks like it's right down the middle, and he bounced. Saved his best curveball for their best hitter. The number two hitter Espinoza 0 for 2 2 strikeouts Harper 0 for 2 2 strikeouts Escobar enjoying a career year struck out in his first at bat. Yeah, the frustration in Escobar you get that a lot as hitters when you know you're facing a guy like Clayton Kershaw and you're going okay that was a pitch I possibly could have hit and I foul it off because you know you're not going to get many against a guy like this. Escobar hitting about 50 points above his career batting average came into the season at 276 and at the moment he's at 328. Kershaw has been a control freak today. Just missing. He is so locked in right now. Though over the course of the last two outings, he's gone 12 and a third innings, struck out 20. Take it. Oh, that's, that's uh, okay. That's real really good. good. Real good. <laughs> and, the, and the fun thing is for the Nationals is the shadows are starting to creep in. <laughs> in the right, right at Puig. Meanwhile, Kershaw has uh, retired, has about 16 consecutive scoreless in 15 and two thirds to be precise. And then there's that Granky fellow. Yeah, he's halfway to Granky. <laughs> <laughs> he's about halfway to you. <laughs> I hope both of them break it. That would be a fun thing to watch. Here's Clint Robinson. Ah! We've had our day, Nomar. Time for somebody else exactly. to have it. Let's go. Let's let's pair it all together too. We've got a, the All Star Game in Cincinnati. Well, that happened in '88. We got a guy maybe on a scoreless streak. That happened in '88. And the Dodgers won the World Championship. That happened in '88. So let's have an '88. There we go. '88 and out the gate. Let's do it. Let's, it's let's okay make, when history can repeat itself. Yeah, let's make 2015 look like '88. And party like it's 99. Thank you. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. We got a second look free agent in Kirk Gibson that year. Traded for an outstanding shortstop in Alfredo Griffin. Buttoned up the bullpen with some guys like Jay Howell. Tim Cruz and Brian Holton and Jesse Orozco had good years. Tim Belcher is a rookie pitch real well. On two and two, down goes Robinson. The eighth strikeout of the game for Clayton Kershaw. Nationals go in order. We'll come back for the fifth with Kershaw leading it off. Then Peterson and Kenny.
as Denny's presents Friday Night Fireworks. Come out July 31st and take your place on the field for a fireworks show featuring the music from the 1980s. For more information, go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. Dodgers have a one to nothing lead on Doug Fister and Clayton Kershaw, who has struck out eight and given up a couple of meaningless singles along the way. Has been as good as it gets to this point. Kershaw bounced to third in his first at bat, takes a strike, and it's nothing in one. Jock Peterson on deck, Howie Kendrick to follow. Fister is yet to throw a perfect inning. One ball and one strike. It really feels like the Dodgers are way out in front. That Fister, if this is a boxing match, would be getting hit the whole time. And the way Clayton's throwing the ball, one to nothing, seems like insurmountable almost. But you don't want to get too comfortable. You want no. to get the guy some runs. Yep. All the more chop. Kershaw. Out at first base. Well, that was a very close play. Bill Miller, the crew chief. Clayton getting down the line, hustling, and ooh, that's very Whoa. close. I'm sure they're probably on one. the phone taking a look. They might want to have another look. Yeah, they might want to look at that one. Ooh. I think mm. well, Kershaw is going back. Mattingly remains in the dugout. Oh, and predicting. hold on a minute. I have finished predicting though on yeah, what New York's going to decide. They just said go ahead. He's like, Jock, wait, no, get back in there. It's okay. <laughs> All right, let's play. <laughs> you got him. That's one thing about Kershaw. One of the what? most routine of infield ground outs he is hustling all the way and yeah, most of the time you talk about a guy who plays with their hair on fire you're talking about an everyday player Clayton pitches with his hair on fire and hits with his hair on fire and bunts with his hair on fire and, and only you can prevent yeah far as far. <laughs> hair on fire uh, I remember most I think about the Kershaw no hitter last year against Colorado it was eight or nine nothing but and he was batting in the eighth inning and it was a routine ground ball to short. And he is busting it out. And he's out on a bang bang play. And I'm thinking to myself, he's got a no hitter goal. He's up by eight runs. But that does not figure into how he sees the world and sees the game. That, that I think more than anything else about that night was what he did in the eighth inning on a routine ground ball to short. And that gets that's just instinct. That's the way you care about the game. You just go out there, you play it. Don't know any different but to run one way. Well, Peterson hit by a pitch. It's hitting the leg, and you're wondering, is he okay? But he pops right up and then runs down the first base. Just flew right there in the back of the. Looks like gets him in the hamstring. Great job turning away from the ball, too. He's smiling over there, tips his hat. Play to the dugout says, I'm okay. Kendrick one for two. Fouls this one off his mm. foot. And how he's going, you know what? That one probably hurt more than what <laughs> Jock <laughs> just got hit by a bitch, but he foul that one off your foot and your ankle, wherever that hit him. This one. Oh, oh yeah, Lord. that's right there on the shin. That one hurts more. I'll have that for about two oh. weeks. Talk about wearing. I'll tell you what, it's still throbbing. <laughs> he may go home tonight on the bus without socks. Just, there's no sense. Yeah, that's what they usually do on those. They have that compression sleeve or something. Yeah. They're putting on. They're wrapping it to try to keep the swelling out because you know. Up the middle, pass a diving Desmond. Peterson flirts with the notion of 
going to third and hurriedly returns to second. So he talked about getting more runs. Get Clayton some more runs. He's on the bench resting, but now we got first and second one out. This is where they need to capitalize and really stretch this lead. Catch a break on the range there up the middle. Jock thinking about going to third, but pulls up just in the nick of time. Maybe that slip stopped him. Now Justin Turner. So the Dodgers have who they want coming up with runners on. Peterson at second, Kendrick at first, Turner, and Gonzalez and Ethier. A run and seven hits for the Dodgers. No runs, two hits for the Nationals. And Turner takes a strike. And we talk about you know getting some runs, but look at the shadows right now. So this is right now, it, it, you know, you get a little bit further, it's gonna really come into place. So the Dodgers need to see if they can capitalize this inning. Turner 304 with runners in scoring position, 305 on the year. This is the time to capitalize. Not only the setting of the table, the light's still good, and it's the third time around in the order. In the middle and the heart of your lineup. Setting of the table and the setting of the sun. Is this affecting Turner at all at this moment, no more? Is it? Not, it's got to be a few not, more feet. Not so bad right now. It's gonna. It's getting there, but right now it's not too bad. Especially, especially how much sun is between you and the pitcher. One and two. Peterson from second. Kendrick from first. In the left field for a base hit. Rounding third on his way home is Peterson. Ball bobbled by Robinson. Sliding into third is Kendrick. And going to second is Turner. And the Dodgers take a 2 nothing lead. So another clutch hit for Justin Turner. The ball bobbled by Robinson by trade of first baseman. Bobbles it in left. Dodgers get a, an extra base out of the deal and a 2 nothing lead. Table has been set and the table is beginning to be cleared. Ball in the inner half. He does a good job getting the barrel to that ball and driving it to left field. And then it was just good base running all around by the Dodgers. I mean, obviously, Jock scoring on that. Howie recognizing the bobble to get to third. And then Justin running hard. And after that ball kicks off, Howie getting the second. And Gonzalez will be intentionally walked. Andre Ethier. Hit an error and RBI on that play, and Justin Turner his 40th run batted in. Second walk of the game given up by Fister. The Nationals bullpens begin to shuffle around. Here's here's one of those moments that we talk about what are what's my approach to Fister or Sykes trying to cut the strike zone in half look up in the zone while Here I have a man on third base less than two outs. That's the idea I'm looking for anyway So it kind of just plays into what you the proper approach against Fister and This is the chance for the Dodgers to blow the game open Especially the way Kershaw has been thrown bases are loaded one out Ethier takes down and in. One ball, no strikes. Ethier 280 on the year. 265 with runners in scoring position. In the right center field. And it was caught. By Bryce Harper. Brilliant play, but tagging and scoring is Kendrick, and the Dodgers take a 3 0 lead. Boy, if Harper doesn't make that play, the base is empty, and Ethier probably ends up at third. A good piece of hitting by Andre Ethier. Looked like it was going to fall in. A great piece of base running by Howie Kendrick, not assuming this ball is going to fall in, so he is standing on third base watching Harper's catch. And as he catches it, it's an easy tag. But the lack of assumption from Howie made him score easy. First and second, two out. 
And Turner did a good job staying put. Going full well if it gets past Bryce Harper. He could skip home from second base. Well, Andre Ethier's been having some good at bats. We've been talking about that all day today. And there was another one right there. And he drives that ball. And the good thing about it is when you have a good at bat, you're like, okay, great play on me. I line out. Another good one. But a good result. It's an RBI sacrifice fly. And for Ethier, his 32nd run batted in. Ground ball, base hit into left field. Turner rounding third. He's on his way home. Robinson's throw is... Not in time, bobbled by Lobatone, and the Dodgers take a 4 0 lead. So, some clutch hitting for the Dodgers here in the fifth. Well, Yasiel Puig on the pitch before was so mad at himself because he got a ball he knew he could drive, possibly even hit out of the ballpark. And then he gets a pitch he just handles. He doesn't take as big as a swing as the one before and gets a nice, hard hit to the left field. So Puig with two RBIs this afternoon. 16 on the year. Kershaw and the Dodgers sitting pretty with a 4 to nothing lead. Three runs here in the fifth. A.J. Ellis has hit the ball hard twice today. A single to center and rocketed into a 5-4-3 double play in his first at-bat. Ellis, the eighth batter of the inning. Nothing in one. To short. Desmond. Underhanded flip to Espinosa. And that is that. But the Dodgers come up with three runs. Three hits. Helped by an error. And lead. Four nothing. As we go to the bottom of the fifth. Down with Dodgers catcher Yasmani Grandal to discuss his trade from the Padres to the Dodgers. Catch the premier connected with Yasmani Grandal at 5 o'clock on Sportsnet LA. So check out connected with Yasmani Grandal later today at 5 o'clock. Right here. So Clayton Kershaw, who has just been sparkling today, eight strikeouts, no walks, given up a couple of singles. And my goodness, he's fallen behind in the count, one and oh. He's been ahead of every batter today, practically 11 of 15 batters have faced strike one, oh, and one. Now it's one ball, one strike to Desmond, who struck out in his first at bat. 16 consecutive shutout innings for Kershaw. 
One ball and two strikes to Desmond. Lobatone on deck and Tyler Moore to follow. One other note about Kershaw to this point. He's not fallen behind 2 0 to anybody, and there have been no three ball counts yet. One and two to Desmond. Now the shadows are making life a bit miserable for the hitters. Huh? They're, gonna be, they're definitely starting to be a factor. I mean, it's, you know, if you're the Nationals, you're going great. That's what we don't need against Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw plus shadows equals strikeout. That's nine strikeouts for Clayton Kershaw, and the first out of the fifth. The pitch count by inning is absolutely ridiculous. When you're striking out nine guys and your pitch count is hovering around 12 and a half, 13. Five to get Desmond out right there. That is so efficient. Now Lobatone. Takes inside. The moral victory for Lobatone in his first at bat. He made contact and bounced to third. First time Kershaw's fallen behind 2 and 0 all day. Slowly hit. Rollins. Throw out the slow running. Lobatone 2 out. So Kershaw starts today because he threw 22 pitches on Tuesday in the All-Star game. He was at least on paper slated to go in last night's game. And as it turned out, this was actually a good thing. What with the delays with the, the lights. Exactly, Charlie. I mean, we, you'd have lost him and you would only had Clayton for the five innings. And he'd have been through the same. Same chapter he went through in Chicago. With he, he wouldn't have been upset at all. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> well, he and, uh, Joe Madden had a, a makeup session the day after. It was it June 22nd, I guess it was? A mere 10 minute light delay. We had over two hours worth last night. There's that third ball. Nothing in two to more. You just run out of adjectives watching a pitch when he's locked in like this. You can tell people how sharp he is. You can tell the break is exceptional. Yep. Yes, you can. <laughs> two more strikeouts here in the fifth. Ten in the game for Kershaw. He's got a two hitter going through five, and the Dodgers lead four nothing.
getting Jimmy Rollins, Clayton Kershaw, and Jock Peterson due up in this inning for Los Angeles. Taylor Jordan on the hill now for the Washington Nationals. And earlier today, I was having a conversation with Dodgers hitting coach Mark McGuire about Jimmy Rollins and Yasiel Puig in the indoor batting cage. And McGuire was talking to me about how several people have talked about his oldest son as far as possibly pursuing a career as a switch hitter as he gets older, as Jimmy Rollins was in the indoor cage, guys. And he said, you know, one thing I have to impart on my son is as a switch hitter like a Jimmy Rollins or a Yasmani Grandal or even an Alberto Cayasco, you have to do everything that the regular position players do twice. He said, obviously, taking, you know, hits in the cage up from both sides of the plate from both sides. He said that, you know, it's something that you also have to be mentally prepared to do as well, guys. So the new pitcher for the uh, Nationals, Taylor Jordan, he's the 26th guy. Because of the suspension last night, each team was afforded the luxury of adding one more player. The Dodgers added Zach Lee today. Whether we see Lee or not, the way Kershaw is going, I think it's fair to say it's a very, very, very long shot. But at least Zach Lee at long last has made it to the major leagues. Jordan is a ninth round pick of the Nationals back in 2009. Rollins, Rockets, one foul, and it's nothing in two. You know, thinking about what Alana said, talking about switch hitting, I remember in college, and you know, hitters are always like, how many swings are you going to take in batting practice? Well, played with Jason Veritek, switch hitter. His group would have one less guy in there because Veritek had to take two rounds, one from the right side and one from the left. In the right center field, Taylor has plenty of room. Runs a perfect route. Rollins flies to center, one out here in the sixth. Coach Mark Teixeira in Texas, and then he moved on. And he always was a slow starter. And he said, you know, it was really hard for him to get enough reps in spring training. To, and he always blamed his slow starts on the fact that it just takes longer as a switch hitter to get everything ready. Well, here's Clayton Kershaw stepping in. He's 0 for 2. Ah! Strike, nothing in one. Along with Jordan entering the game. Matt Dendecker, who hit the pinch hit home run in the eighth inning, enters the game. He's in left field now. And moving from left field to first base is Clint Robinson. So when all is said and done, Tyler Moore, the first baseman, is out of the game. There's Robinson. First baseman is the first base is his position by trade. So Doug Fister goes five innings, four runs, and nine hits. And Kershaw with a two hopper to Espinosa. That'll bring up Jock Peterson. Jock walked in his first at bat, fly to right, and then was hit by a pitch. Dodgers 4 0, and Kershaw has struck out 10 through 5 and has pitched as well as at any time this season. Hey, the lights are on. Let's try and help the shadows a little bit. <laughs> That's the Where bank. Where were they last night? That's the bank that was out. Now the bank is open on Saturdays. Huh? The official word was it was a circuit breaker problem. They tested them through the night, and they're going to work. So the best part was from last night. As Peterson finds a single in the right field with two out, who's first in the game. One of the uh, Nationals owners is up in the booth during the interminable delay. His family and friends. And he's sitting, in fact, in your chair. And he gets a gets an email from the vice president in charge of light banks or whatever. They are. <laughs> well, the, com the computer says the lights are on. Well, our friend emailed back: either reboot the computer or fire him. Crowded to third. That'll do it. So Kendrick is two for four on the day. No run to the hit. The lights are on and everybody's home on this Saturday afternoon. 
After five and a half, Dodgers four nothing. Well, have breakfast with us tomorrow morning, 10:30 first pitch this season. The two best pitchers in the National League, Zach Greinke and Max Scherzer, and then it's on to Atlanta. A couple of night games, four o'clock Pacific time, Monday, Tuesday. Noon start in uh, Atlanta on Wednesday, and then over the weekend, Thursday through next Sunday, the Dodgers will be in New York. Well. Clayton Kershaw rarely, if ever, is a warm-up act. And on this day, he has been blazing hot in that capacity. First pitch, then Decker tries to bunt his way on. Then Decker had the big game-winning two-run pinch hit home run in the eighth inning of the first game. So one pitch, one out here in the bottom of the sixth. Michael Taylor 0 for 2 has been struck out once. Kershaw has struck out two in each of the first five innings. Sixty five pitches for Kershaw. Only 17 balls. Do the math. He's got three balls an inning. Yeah. <laughs> Hair soaking wet, sweat dripping down his neck. It tells you there's a lot of humidity and he's been using it to his advantage. Now we were talking about that between us. About heat, humidity, the sweat and all of that. And how that might work to the advantage of somebody like Kershaw or to a pitcher in general. And do explain why after the 2-1. Well we we talk about how light the air is in Colorado and the lack of humidity and how it's been tough for Clayton to pitch sometimes in Colorado and sometimes in Arizona. Well, when he gets to sea level and the, the temperatures heat up through the East Coast, he's going to do really well with that. The water molecules in the air that are easier to break that breaking ball against the heavy air. And we're seeing that ball break out of the sky today. Makes that slider later and tighter. Makes the curveball bigger and sharper. And 11 strikeouts through five and two thirds. Doesn't hurt his velocity at all. Is it a matter of getting a better grip? Well, you get a little better grip too. He's got the big hands that's easy for him to get to the front of the ball. He's it's a little easier to have the rosin feel like it's sticky on your hand. Really have a nice tacky grip on the ball. 
Espinosa has struck out twice today. And when it's drier and colder at, in the later months, you, your fingers have a tendency to feel a little bit slipperier. You don't have as much moisture in your skin, and not as much moisture in the air to break the ball against. No balls and two strikes to Danny Espinosa. Well, whatever it is, it seems like it's perfect condition yeah. right now for Clayton oh. Kershaw. Yes. Yeah. Well, and we got the nice lighting for him too. Yeah. <laughs> no balls, two strikes, two out. One ball and two strikes. Last outing, 13 Ks against Philadelphia, 123 pitches, both season highs for him. Not sure he's going to break the pitch count today, but he might pass through the strikeouts. Tough hop made easily by Turner, who throws it away. That hit, that hit the base runner. That hit Espinosa as he was going to first base, and that's why he kicked off over there. So Adrian's wondering if it even hit him in the head. He may have. You heard a click. Yeah, Adrian works his way to the inside of the yeah. field right there. And yeah, his, his the helmet gets in the way of the glove. More importantly, the helmet gets in the way of the head. Removing the scuff marks. So the throwing error by Turner. That is the uh, first runner in scoring position. For the Nationals. And Bryce Harper's coming up. Harper has been struck out twice today. So it goes as a hit and an error. The only good thing that does is gives Clayton a chance to strike somebody out and keep up the two and inning. He's got 11. Through five and two thirds. One ball, one strike. It's been a battle for Bryce Harper today. He's not used to striking out twice in a game, and now trying to pick up Clayton's pitches through this light with the 0 for 2 in your back pocket. Well, you could hear Adrian Johnson bellow out the call strike. Johnson is sixth season as a big league umpire out of Houston. He's 40 years of age. Bryce doesn't know what to look for. If the high fastball strike against him, the fastball down the middle right there, he just takes. They've been getting him out with the curve ball, and he's looking for it. He hadn't gotten it this at bat. On one and two. Strikeout number 12 for Clayton Kershaw. He has struck out two in each of the first six innings. And through six innings of play, the Dodgers six and the Nationals. Correction, Dodgers four. Washington double.
Football on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com and buy Jack in the Box. Taste the new black pepper cheeseburger today, only at Jack in the Box. Justin Turner leads it off for the Dodgers in the seventh. Taylor Jordan, the 26th man. Washington was allowed to add to their roster today. The Dodgers added Zach Lee just in case because of the suspension last night. Not to tax either team's pitching stats. 0 oh 2 to Turner, who is 2 for 3. An RBI and a run score. Dodgers with a run in the second and three in the fifth. And Kershaw has struck out 12 through six. Jordan strikes out Turner. And that's the first out of the seven. Now Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez in the first game last night and earlier this afternoon. Two home runs, three at bats, and a walk. And in the regularly scheduled game here. Intentional walk, single, and a run scored. It's also flying to right. Four runs, ten hits for the Dodgers. And the Nationals no runs and three bases. To center field, Taylor's got a long way to go, and he's been turned around. Hits off the base of the wall. And Adrian Gonzalez will go to second base. So Gonzalez continues his hot hitting since the intermission. Well, he stays on this ball, the ball tailing on the outer half, and just just drives it. And that's he covers both sides of the plate so well. And yo, he does get first base. He kicked it. We saw it look awkward. We're wondering if he might have stepped over it, but he made sure he got it. And on the second. The Dodgers looking to tack on an insurance run here as Andre Ethier steps in. Ethier. Single to center. Sacrifice fly. And fly to center. No balls and one strike. Andre at the moment at 283. Another line out. He, he, in the suspended game, he went one for four with two line outs. In this game, he's now one for four with two line outs. <laughs> he is. Stay right there. He is. He, the, the, the only thing is maybe change your angles. That's about it. Stay right there. What do you mean? Move up in the box or yeah. back in the box? Yeah, move up or back in the box. Changes your angle just a little bit. Maybe those line outs. It keeps you still locked in with your timing. But Maybe they have a tendency to find the holes a little bit better. Quig two for three has knocked in two. The Dodgers lead by four. Jordan on in relief of Doug Fister, who went five innings and gave up four runs and nine hits. Jordan, a ninth round pick. He's a Florida boy, Merritt Island. Two and zero to Pui. Two balls, no strikes, two outs. There's a strike. Ninety-two. 
Cincinnati Reds drafted him in 2007. He said thanks, but no thanks. Waited a couple of years and became the ninth round pick of the Nationals. Taylor Jordan's dad is a rocket scientist. Really? Works for NASA. What are you, a rocket science? Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact. Yeah. 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 I am. Getting in an argument with him? Yeah. And my kid pitches in the major leagues. What the, what's it to you? <laughs> two and two. This isn't rocket science, or is it? <laughs> <laughs> Thus, he grew up in Florida. AJ Ellis on deck. Two balls, two strikes, and two. I don't know what. Wonder when he was growing up, <laughs> all of his youth coaches would say to him, "Come on, kid, don't overthink it." Yeah. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to. <laughs> Here's the three two. Quig takes outside ball four. So Quig in the first game was two for three in a walk. And this afternoon in the regularly scheduled portion of our program, he is two for three and a walk. AJ Ellis with two on and two out. Way out in front, and it's nothing in one. Ellis at 221. Two home runs, six runs batted in. He's got four doubles. Grandal getting the day off today. So they hit up the third baseline. And Don Mattingly in his scrum with the media today said that he would probably would have had Yasmani Grandal play all three games here in Washington, but then with the suspension toggled AJ Ellis in there with Clayton Kershaw pitching today. Worked out well for both. Kershaw's got 12 strikeouts. Ellis takes a call strike three. And that will do it. No runs, one hit, two left. Seventh inning stretch. Kershaw and the Dodgers. Four nothing.
right into the Arco top tier plays and of course all 12 of Clayton Kershaw's strikeouts would put you right there at the top. His last outing he had 13 against Philly now with 12 against Washington. Only one foul ball off of him in a two strike count. That was Bryce Harper in his first at bat. Harper has gone down three times. All star against all star. Clayton Kershaw has dominated the Nationals and he is really really locked in. And this is a good sign for the Dodgers second half. Well, Kershaw has struck out two batters in each of the first six innings. And he has one strikeout to equal his season high. Escobar, Robinson, and Desmond to bat in the home half of the seven. And the only runner in scoring position today for the Nationals by way of an error. No runs and three hits. Justin Turner, the Dodgers, should be pointed out. Of the highest fielding percentage and the lowest number of errors in Major League Baseball. And when you consider a year ago, they ranked 14th out of the 15 teams in the National League. Major improvement. Of course, up the middle, they've been great. Gonzalez has four gold gloves. And a steadying presence at third base is in Turner. And if there's a better defensive center fielder in the game, not sure who it is. And Jock Peterson. Look at the highlight films this year, Jock Peterson. Been of his batting average hovers around 230, but he hits the home runs and he plays defense. You can wait for the consistency at the plate. Danell Escobar. 0 for 2 has been struck out once. Now one ball, two strikes. With Grandal and Ellis behind the plate. Dodgers have really improved themselves up the middle. There's the 1 2 inside and low 2 and 2. That was certainly an issue last year. Defensive lapses up the middle. Sure was, Charlie. Now the 2 2 on the way. Strikeout number 13 for Clayton Kershaw, equaling a season high. And be one of the first 40,000 fans in attendance on Wednesday, July 29th. And receive a Yasio Quig bobblehead presented by Jack in the Box. For more information, go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. Thirteen strikeouts for Kershaw. And this is one of those days you knew from the get-go he had it. You know, some days you say, oh, there's a potential for a no-hitter here. No-hitter was done in the second inning, but he has dominated every batter all day. Fastball command was there. Tightness in his breaking ball on that slider, the big break, the sharp break of the curveball. He had it all working. He showed confidence in all of his pitches as the opposing team can't eliminate one and says, Well, he's not throwing the slider for strikes, he's throwing that. He's not throwing the curveball for strikes, he's throwing that. His fastball, well, he doesn't have command for that, so look for it in your spot. No, nope, he's doing it where he wants to. But I think Michael Taylor, their leadoff hitter, must have watched him warm up in the bullpen because he tried to bunt right away. And then he went to work on Espinosa and Harper and struck both those guys out. That's 14 strikeouts for Clayton Kershaw, a new season high. Well, Clayton Kershaw is one away from equaling his career high. A year ago against the Rockies. That was the no hitter. It's the Rockies this. And how close it was to a perfect game. Yeah, that was something that Hanley Ramirez really hated to happen and apologized to Clayton. I never worried about my fielders making an error. I didn't expect an apology. Because when we hang a curveball and give up a home run, you don't tell us that we're going to apologize. Desmond to left. 
And Ethier is there. So right on par for Clayton Kershaw. He has struck out two batters in each of the first seven innings. 14 on the day. And he'll bat second when we come back for the year. seven and tomorrow here's a tale of the tape starters presented by Chevron of course uh, Cranky the lowest ERA in baseball all Scherzer does is retire nearly everybody opposing hitters both well under 200 and that's a if you're a pitching freak tomorrow it doesn't get any better than that we'll be on tomorrow morning 10 30 Pacific well, at the end of today's game, Washington's going to go, well, thank God we've gotten by Kershaw now. <laughs> oh, we get cranky. Talk about a one two punch. Jimmy Rollins. For three. Schilling and Johnson. You had to face those two back to back. It was Roger Clemens paired with Messina sometime. I just remember the ones that I think of. Good old book that they're not in, Moneyball. It wasn't fun facing Zito, Mulder, and Hudson. Exactly. And those, <laughs> all three. They, three. they were the co authors of Moneyball. Oh, were they? They, they were eliminated yeah. from the book and the movie. Because I didn't see them <laughs> get any credits in there. <laughs> hey, they wrote the book. <laughs> Rollins the lead off walk and here comes Clayton Kershaw. By the way Kershaw with the seven shutout innings this afternoon. He's got a shutout string of 19. Little past halfway where Granky is at 35 and two thirds. Bunt. The throw is one, but not two. 14 strikeouts, no walks, and a failed sacrifice by Clayton Kershaw, and that's what he'll probably remember. <laughs> he is such a perfectionist. First, when he first laid it down, it looked like he did a good job deadening the ball. Just got it too close to home plate, and it was an excellent job by Lobatone. He get all over this ball. You're like, okay, he deadens it, but Lobatone just really jumped out and knew right away going to second base. So there's one out. And Peterson. 
Hit a walk, hit by a pitch, a run scored. Doesn't get cheated. Peterson with 20 of the Dodgers 114 home runs. In the left. Again, it's two games after the All-Star play. It's a little thing, and we'll see if this turns into anything or, or nothing at all. But the ball's been going toward left off the bat of Peterson in the first two games. If you look at the chart of his home runs and when he's hit them and where he's hit them. The, the spray pattern has continued to shift towards left field. All of his home runs in the early in the year in April and May were going to right, right field line. All of a sudden, he's starting to hit more to center, and then he actually was hitting a few to left center in the last few few weeks, last three weeks. And in the ninth inning, narrowly missed a home run, a couple of feet foul down the left field. So that would have been the, the most drastic one to left field. Around the foul pole through the state fair. No balls and two strikes to Kendrick, who is two for four this afternoon with a run score. Seven, eight, and nine hitters to bat for the Nationals. In the bottom half of the eighth. Against Kershaw, who has been as dominant as he has been all year. Kendrick takes a call, third strike. Jordan's third strike out of the game. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Kershaw, 14 strikeouts, no walks, a three hitter, four nothing Dodgers. And it's time now for the T-Mobile Data Strong Fan Photo of the Game. Tweet your photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming telecast. Brought to you by T-Mobile. Well, Clayton Kershaw, to this point, is one strikeout away from equaling his career high. He has struck out 14, hasn't walked anybody. One runner as far as score uh, as far as second base into scoring position this afternoon and that came on a throwing error. 14 strikeouts and yet only 89 pitches. Uh, the efficiency is uncanny and when he came back from his injury last year the beginning of the year. He knew he was going to be on a pitch count and it really took him to another level of thinking about conserving his pitches because he knew they were going to limit him to 85 90 pitches coming back from the injury and. He attacked and attacked and attacked, and he has kept that mentality. Lovatone, a rarity in this Washington lineup, he hasn't struck out to 
And the seven hole and the nine hole are the only two holes that Clayton hasn't taken victim. There's a strike. So Kershaw in his last 16 innings went the distance in his final start against the Phillies. Wisely, Turner lets it go foul. Well, both him and Kershaw. Kershaw slides. Get out of the way. Oh. Kershaw go after this ball. Slides and said, let it go. <laughs> Kershaw in his last 16 innings, dating back to the last start, has struck out 27 and hasn't walked anybody. It's a pretty good strikeout to walk ratio, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I hear it is. Well, the last two. Oh, man. Working with numbers, boys and girls. This is really staggering. In his last three, almost four starts, 33 strikeouts and two walks. Outlawed in most municipalities. Now it's three and two. First three ball count of the day, isn't it? Yeah, he's he's been locked in for a while, not just these two starts. Over the last nine starts, part of this plus this one, his ERA is 1.35. On three and two. First nine starts of the year, he had a 4.32. Last nine plus this one. So on his tenth start since the first nine. In a 1.35 ERA. We know the record six and six. And over the last nine starts, he was only four and three. Kershaw knocks it down. Kick save and a butte. Almost disappointed it. He didn't strike him out. One out, nobody on in the air. He, he tried doing that against Clint Robinson, spaced it up the middle, and now he was able to come through. At those last nine starts, what you were talking about, Oral, it's just been the ERA. I mean, just, just falling off the cliff there from a four to a 1.53. And then it's just the opponent batting average. Wow, just 185 in those last nine starts. That's the MVP type numbers that he had all of last year. MVP. Cy Young. Mentioned it last year. Whenever he pitched, he was the best baseball player on the field who just happened to be the pitcher. He did so many things so well. Ground ball to third. Ugla will be thrown out by Turner. There's two out. Shaw now working on his 20th consecutive scoreless in it. Well, he's done it before. Got a chance to do it again. Just thinking, watching Clayton right now on that ground ball, that last ground ball. I remember. Playing behind Pedro Martinez, and when they would get a hit late in the innings or put the ball in play, the crowd would go, "Oh!" Because they're just looking for the strikeout. You're like, "Oh!" And just wait to. But tell them your. But tell them your feeling when they oh, hit the ball. Yeah, I, I'd get caught up as a fan. You're watching, you're like, "Oh man!" I say the same thing. Oh, he didn't strike him out. And then I go, "Oh wait a minute! They hit the ball to me. I got to make the play." <laughs> like there was a slight hesitation. Then Decker rolls it slowly to second base. Kendrick throws him out. First inning all day where Kershaw did not strike out anybody. But the Dodgers will go to the ninth with a cushy 4 0 lead.
Clayton Kershaw is being congratulated as if his uh, day is done. And if so, what a day it was. 14 strikeouts, no walks, no nothing. Three hits, one batter, reached second base. Yeah. Sammy Solis is the new pitcher for the Nationals as we begin the ninth. And Justin Turner is leading it off. This game does not give you a moment to breathe or grieve. Dodgers lose a heartbreaker a few hours ago on a two run pinch hit home run by a fellow named Matt Den Decker in the eighth inning. Half hour later, new day, new game, and they've got a 4 0 lead, and Kershaw could not have been any better. That's Den Decker up in left field now. Lobatone the catcher. Half hour later, you got Clayton Kershaw on the mound with no hit stuff. Get him one run and think it's going to stick, and get him a few insurance runs, and you're almost positive it's going to stick. And now he's done, and you've got to get Kenley Jansen an inning of work because he hasn't thrown in a while. Non save situation, but Kenley should come in and get the job done. One ball, two strikes to Turner, who is two for four today. Two and two. Well, for those who are wondering, in April and May, what's wrong with Kershaw? In the middle of July, the answer is nothing. I would say the one the biggest change that he made when coming out of the first nine starts where the RA was above four was the fact of adding more curveballs back into the arsenal. As the curveball gives him that change of eye line, change of speeds. And I think he was a little bit slider happy and the fastball command was off at the beginning of the year. And his curveball today was oh. as good as it's been all year. Yeah. As good as we've ever seen. Nationals won five to three in the completion of last night's lights out performance. Kershaw and the Dodgers are about to pull all even. Kenley Jansen continues to warm in the bullpen. Turner with a base hit to left. We're talking earlier about thoughtful and professional at bats. Well, that, that's a perfect example, isn't it? Battling off pitches, fouling them off, staying with it. You know, even though what I've been so impressed by watching Justin Turner is even with that high leg kick, the body control, the balance he still has, even with that high leg kick. And even the bat, it's not always a one dimensional type swing. He can have a high leg kick and still shorten up his swing. Yep. Now here's Adrian Gonzalez. Two for three in this game. He was two for three in the previous game, including two home runs. In his last at bat, he doubled off the base of the wall in center field, directly over the head of center fielder Michael Taylor. Giants and Diamondbacks later. Sold out crowd of 41,426, and some are trying to beat the rush. And Kershaw's in no hurry to go anywhere. We've really watched Clayton Kershaw you know, develop before our eyes. And what when he first came onto the big leagues, you know, we're talking back in 2008. He he was a guy with great stuff, and he was effectively wild. 
Uh, he was walking a batter every other inning. And every year he continues to get better in different categories and. The walks per nine innings have just continued to go down this year a little bit more erratic there. The home runs are slightly up this year just because of command. But if you just look at. The long term progression. Whatever weakness he had in his game remembering back in the first draft. He worked on it and he improved upon it. the slider really didn't exist much early on into right field for a base hit Turner will hold it second and Gonzalez with his third base hit so it worked on the slider had the curve certainly always had the fastball but we always talk about how he had no pickoff move because he never had to worry about it meanwhile second baseman Espinoza is down his step his second to last step or so towards this ball looks like he, he just something gives way on it. He wanted to keep running but something pulled. Yeah, that was a little bit odd like yeah. almost I don't know if he was already cramped, falling cramped or something up. before he ends up making okay, that final push. He's got a cramped up yeah. calf or something. Been out there for a while because of the suspended game. Hot, humid day. So he is done. Daniel Burris, the former Giant. He's grown some locks since we saw him last. Espinoza out with an injury, and we'll find out what we can about the Long Beach State product. Here's Ethier. Andre has hit the ball solidly in each of the first two games back. Well, it says today here he's just one for three in a sack fly. Each ball's been squared up. He was one for four. In the first game, half last night, half this afternoon, ground ball slowly hit up the middle. Burris with Desmond on a double play. Turner goes to third. There's two out. Not the easiest thing, Nomar, to come off the bench cold and all of a sudden you're playing to be part of a double play. And the ball always seems to find <laughs> always. you. But, but it's a little bit easier when you know, okay, I just got to field it and give a flip here. Checking to see if Andre may have beaten that ball out at first base. But they do want to take a look. Yep. The crew chief is Bill Miller. And he's the one who made the call. Let's have a look see. He's safe. He's yeah, he's safe. Yes, he is. He is safe. A four six three is going to get changed to a fielder's choice. And first and third and one out. Didn't take long to overrule. The Dodgers have first and third with one out, and Yasiel Puig coming up. Yasiel can have himself a day here. Drive this run in, drive it in with a sack fly, or drive it in with a hit. Well, 
half of yesterday and the first half of today was two for three in a walk. And in this uh, full scale game, he is two for three and two runs batted in. Dodgers need his bat to heat up down the stretch. Ball inside and low, one ball, no strikes. Ellis on deck. Turner's at third. Ethier is at first. Four nothing. One out. Top of the ninth. Two balls, no strikes. Outfield essentially straight away for Puig, as is the infield. Three balls, no strikes. We walked in the first game. He's walked in the second game. Dodgers have out hit the Nationals 13 to 3, taking all the way. It's 3 and 1. Juan Nicasio is joining Kenley Jansen in the bullpen. Three and two. Kershaw, indeed, his day is done, and by all indications, it is. Eight innings, three hits, 14 strikeouts, no walks, 101 pitches, 73 for strikes. Second out of the ninth. A.J. Ellis coming up. You know, we had a shot of the bullpen down there with Nicasio joining Kenley Jansen. I think the Dodgers want to get Kenley some work. But not at the expense of running his pitch count up and worrying about when that. Comes into the game depending on how this offensive production this inning goes. With the day game tomorrow they want Kenley to be fresh and ready to go. They'll probably try and keep his pitch count down below 12 or 15. So you might see Nicasio actually start the inning. And maybe Kenley come in for one batter just to knock the rust off. The other thought might be start Nicasio, and if he gets into any sort of trouble, you have Kenley. And you have Kenley as the yeah. backstop. So perhaps the Dodgers score another run or two here and be more comfortable in bringing Nicasio in. But we'll all be so much smarter in about five minutes. Ah! One ball and two strikes. AJ Ellis is one for four. When I was a pitching coach for the Rangers, I didn't like to give all the scenarios to the pitchers. I wanted them to be able to get up, concentrate on getting ready from when we asked them to be ready, and then that was it. If we had other plans or other alternatives in our head. We kept those to ourselves until it was time to to give them to the pitchers because you don't want them. To, well, I'm in. Oh, and start thinking along with you in the game. It's like no, you concentrate on getting your your rhythm, get your location, bring your pitches along, and, and it goes along the way where you hear so many guys in the bullpen. It's nice to define our roles so we can just be kind of one frame of mind every time the phone rings for and we're called. Ellis down on strikes. That ends the inning. The Dodgers threaten. A couple of hits. Leave two. We go to the bottom of the ninth. And it looks like it will be, in fact, Kenley Jansen on his way in. Four nothing Dodgers.
number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment, at any moment. In game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, and radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Capital getting a little work done. And Kenley Jansen's getting a little work in. His 23rd appearance. The ERF one and two thirds. He has struck out 38 in 21 and two thirds innings and walked only two. And hitters are barely hitting the leg again. Kershaw's magnificent performance is over. 101 pitches, 73 strikes. Three hits, 14 strikeouts, no walks. And if Jansen can retire the Nationals without a run, the Dodgers will have recorded their 14th shutout of the year. And that would give them the major league lead. And the Giants have 13 apiece. Taylor's thinking to himself, oh, great. I get through Kershaw 0 for 3, punched out twice. Now I get to face Jansen, who struck out 38 and walked 2. Whoop de doo. And it's 0 and 2. Well, for the Nationals, like the Dodgers, this is measuring stick time. Second half baseball, two teams that are expected to be in the playoffs. And you got a playoff performance so far from. Clayton Kershaw today, and now Kenley Jansen trying to sew it up. He's a third of the way there. Okay, we're talking about it. These are not just three games in Washington in July. There are three more in Los Angeles next month for the Nationals. It's entirely conceivable that these two teams will face one another in October, and there's some home field advantage at play. And who knows what the rosters are going to look like if they yeah. get to October and face each other. Even when we get to L.A. and they face each other. Spans hurt. Zimmerman's hurt. Dones hurt. Strasburg's down. Trade deadline July 31st. And the movement will start. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Dodgers don't play another game within the National League Western Division until the last day of August. They play the Giants at home. So the next 37 games are outside the West. And the trade deadline is, is kind of like the free agent signing season. When the first chips start to fall, it starts to unravel the ball. Because there are, there are people that are on the radar that you're making deals for, you're looking to acquire. And, and once they go off the board, then it forces you into other areas and you start thinking with some urgency. So just in the free agent market when you're looking to sign a starting pitcher or a big bullpen piece or a big bat you've got your eye on you're negotiating with an agent. Well now they're negotiating with each other the general managers. So. And Stop. the other factor is you've got now all these teams vying for the wild card are they buyers or are they sellers they may be buyers at a quarter to seven on a Saturday night in the middle of July. They could be sellers a week from now depending on how that all plays out. And since we added the extra wild card the sellers have a lot more leverage because mm -hmm. there's definitely more buyers in the market. Manuel Burris on 0 and 2 the former giant. Figure that Cincinnati is a seller. You figure that Milwaukee is a seller. You figure that the Phillies are a seller. And after that, you've got teams with visions of the postseason dancing in their heads, and they really have to be dazzled. Here's the one-two. Off the glove of Rollins, a base hit. For a one-out single here in the bottom of the ninth, Emmanuel Burris. This ball just catches the middle of the plate. Emmanuel Burris does a good job driving it right back up the middle. And you see right there for Jimmy Rollins, the last hop kind of picked up on him. And it would have been a tough play either way with, with that hop or without that hop. 
was just a solid single back up the middle. And Burris has great speed. Well, here's Bryce Harper. He for one is happy that Kershaw's day is done. Oh for three, struck out three times. Dodgers four nothing. And for the Nats, their fourth hit of the ball game. Burris takes second on defensive indifference. One and one. Charlie talked to buyers and sellers. The American League, you got of the five qualifying teams right now, right below them, there's seven teams within six and a half games. That's the American League. That's 12 teams off the, off the board. And then in the National League, of the five qualifying teams, there's six teams within six and a half games. That's 11 off the board. Drill to right field, and Freed just turns around and watches it go way out into the second deck. It is four to two. Bryce Harper's 27th home run of the year. Well, there goes the shutout. Still tied with the Giants with 13 shutouts to the Dodgers. Not tied with the Nationals right now because they're still up four to two, but that makes it a little bit more interesting. Nationals are not going to be sellers, that's for sure. And Kenley Jansen hopes to, wishes he could get this pitch back. Oh. He's going to have to go a long way to go get it then if he wants it back because that ball was crushed. And Bryce Harper coming in, got a bat, striking out three times against Clayton Kershaw. Facing the closer and Kenley and just puts a monster swing. Jansen has given up 11 hits this season, three of them home runs. 27 home runs. We're not through July. It's amazing. We see that when in bringing closers when they're in a non save situation, just the difference. They always seem to, you know, give up a run. Harper's got four more home runs than his age. Five now. He's 22. He's already. Established career highs in home runs and RBIs. And for the Nationals, this is their 88th game. Well, definitely a guy's going to be in the MVP race. The other guy's in the Cy Young race. We have three award winners in this game. And Harper's a legitimate triple crown candidate. Could have an MVP in this game. You could have a Cy Young in this game or in this series. Cranky tomorrow. Cranky and, and then you could have Rookie of the Year in this game. No balls and two strikes. Now there's two out. Sixteen of the twenty-six outs for the Nationals today have been strikeouts. Fourteen for Kershaw. The twenty-seventh home run for Bryce Harper ties Giancarlo Stanton and Mike Trout for the Major League lead. Clint ah. Robinson takes a strike. Robinson is one for three. And now the Dodgers are a strike away from their 52nd win of the year. The Nationals coming into this game since the 19th of June, the last month, best record in baseball, 15 and six. But that's changing. Kenley Jansen strikes out the side. 
The Dodgers hang on and beat the Nationals four to two. Four runs, 11 hits, and one error for the Dodgers. And two runs and four base hits for the Nationals. Now it's time to take a look at who could it be? The Lexus player of the game, that guy. What a day today. 14 strikeouts, no walks. One batter reached as far as second base. Through 101 pitches, 73 for strikes. And proves his record. Go, Dodgers! And six. And lowers his ERA to 268. So that's a wrap for us from Washington. Hey. 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 Hey.